Hey guys, this is Azra here back on Tintegi.net playing more with our sort of long-term noise, this hacktivist meeting archive interface type of deck. We are up against <laughs> Spark again, four NBNs actually, and um, back to back, which is sad because it's kind of the hardest matchup here. I'm really trying to get some tests in with archive interface and hacktivist meeting to see how useful they are in these long-term horizontal decks, but seeing a lot of NBN kind of fast events as, as per usual really. So this starting hand really is tempting, but I think it's got to go. No wild side, no Aesops. These lampreys are probably not going to land early. And um, this isn't that much better. We'll probably end up using that. I've had a worse for draw here. At least we can data sucker Aesops if we need to. And oh my, what is this? So product placement is going to cost us a credit straight away. And I imagine pad campaign is probably going to cost us one straight away after. Uh, true. Pretty rough start, actually. Um, yeah, let's. I've had worse. There's cash, which is good for us, and a second imp is actually very good for us here. So this is actually not that bad. Um, pretty tempted to run imp and run here, but I want to make sure we can keep our economy going. So I'm just going to get set up here and potentially see a uh, pad campaign probably rest here, which we can go back and trash. Oh, Adonis is actually a little bit worse. Um, if he ices in front of this, it's going to be pretty nasty, actually. She doesn't, which is okay. Reasonable, actually, I think, dice here, though, in case of Lamprey. Um, we're definitely going to go in there, though, and look to trash both of these uh, straight away. Uh, clot's okay. Wild side. Oh, goodness, I want to install wild side right now, but I want to get in and kill this money um, slightly more importantly. It is going to get two credits on the product placement, which is a bit sad. Um, but I think we've got to do it. And we can just ace off the data sucker and hopefully get going um, a little bit quicker here. So. We're falling a little bit behind, but this wild side draw is pretty good. Pretty crucial, really. So, filling up his hand, probably going to get rid of some unnecessary things. And the early Jackson is obviously strong against noise, but if we can get him to pop it quickly, I'll be happy. And he's actually singly drawing for his final click, which is interesting. I just run the Jackson. What's the likelihood that there's news teams in here that we probably want to avoid? Running the Jackson might be the safer bet. So we could imp wild side, run the Jackson, I think might. Oh, not imp, sorry, excuse me. We could that sucker wild side, run the Jackson, I think might be the play. See if we can get this popped, which we do. Let's see what goes back in. Three face down cards, okay. So our early um, mills alongside his over um, overdrawing has actually worked out pretty well for us, stopping him getting things that would give him money or benefits back. So I'm okay with that. Uh, breaking news, okay. That's spot on with me. And we do get a bit of money, which is actually great. Very well timed for us. No Faust yet to go and kind of significantly put pressure on. Small concern of Archangel. I mean, it could cost us a wild side, which would be like three credits and a click, which is not something you really want to face plant. And we could go check archives before he gets a Jackson, just to kind of hold on to that benefit. So I think I will check archives now just to see what's in here. Hopefully we don't see a news team. We don't see anything. So Sand Sand's good, Ash is good. Two Data Ravens as well. I'm actually pretty happy with all of those hits. Wasn't expecting the closed accounts out of Spark actually. So very money, denial, lots of economy for him and ways to kind of slow us down with Ash and closed accounts. So that's pretty good considering we're not in the worst financial position right now. I'm gonna throw out Hacktivist Meeting on the hope that he's just scored breaking news and hopefully doesn't have another 2-1 in hand. And if he tries to put out some more um, advertisements or advertisements, 
it'll slow him down. Oh, goodness. But he had it. <laughs> Shortest lived hacktivist meeting ever. Um, but that's okay. You kind of take that risk a little bit, I think. We'll pedal and see Mimic Grimoire Faust. It's not too bad. I would like to have the Grimoire, but the Faust may be what we end up taking. I think we'll go and look to poke the hand here. Let's see what he's got for two credits. Mm, resistor. We just bounce here and look to parasite that next turn. Mm, or we could install Faust now and break it with the Aesops. I think we're probably going to end up installing the Faust anyway. Uh, no bad. I don't think I'm going to let you trace. See if we can imp something good here. Um, do you know what? Because he's playing that in Spark, I am good to imp that. And then let's Deja the caches back and just prepare to get some more money going here. We definitely want to hold the money advantage. It's a pretty big deal to do so against Spark. If we can keep his ice count to a minimum, and not get hurt really hard by anything like an Archangel or Assassin or Data Raven. We can really look to put HQ and R&D pressure on and um, back and forth. And our deck's coming in a pretty good order here. Getting that one Deja Vu for the double cash is actually a really significant boon. And there's a third cash and a Deja Vu actually. Maybe slightly overkill at this stage, but it'll power us through. And let's go check out his hand. No lampreys to really abuse this, but... Ooh, shipment from Zansan. Okay. Um, I'm alright with that. Something you would like to imp uh, a lot of times. I think we're probably going to have to go and check out that card. It might not be anything, probably just something like a lunch campaign, but I do not want to give him the opportunity to get his finances going any stronger. Oh, wow, okay. Oh, there is a lamprey, which is really good here. I think the lamprey, you know, is, is useful if I can get him to zero, but knowing that these could potentially be pad campaigns or or even just launch campaigns is, is kind of defeats that. But if I put the Lamprey down and then run third click, he'll probably be forced to res these really. Hmm. Not sure, I really, really wish I had an extra click right now. So let's see if we can force a res out of one of these. No further reaction? Oh wow, we see product placement, which is pretty sad. Okay. Oh wow, double launch campaign. Brings them right back into the money. So yeah, I think we'll go and at least take out the open one here next turn. Not even sure if it's worth an imp counter considering we're doing pretty well for money, so I might not even worry about installing the imp actually. Another lamprey is good. Just having three clicks and trying two cards a turn is really putting us in this position where we don't want to give up cards and I really don't want to be trashing them unnecessarily. There's nothing here I really want rid of except for potentially the clock and the iPad worse.
And I think I'm going to throw the medium down. I would like, yeah, throw the medium down to potentially make him ice R and D, and then look to do the lamprey pressure is going to be my call. With two lampreys and a medium out, and with Faust on the board, we really can put a pretty large amount of pressure, and he does decide to double ice R and D, which is great for us. Oh, nope, changes his mind just a little bit. Uh, that's okay. Ah, uh, <laughs> did he hear us? <laughs> Uh, I think that's actually a pretty awesome decision from him there to, to make that. Um, going all that sort of defensive just into one server is very risky against Noise. Um, so yeah, really, I think a really good play from him. Uh, I think we're just going to continue to sit back uh, a little bit and just continue to build up. We do lose a Deja. We have a Clot now on command, which is nice. So I'll potentially just install this clot. He might purge with the clot and the lamprey on the board. Having this clot just sitting really is the only thing we want to install in the street peddler is actually pretty awesome. This could be a big part. Uh, just making sure he doesn't Try and fast advance there. I was about to type, but it doesn't look like he's doing that. I'm just going to sell this clot off. And overall, he's going to have agenda starting to build up an HQ here. We've only seen two, and we can assume there's one or two in archives, but yeah, like this HQ pressure is real. And he's even fearing the Hades which I think is a legitimate threat, that we're not running one and shovels three face down, okay. So we're drawing more lampreys, which realistically are not gonna be that useful to us with the amount of, with the amount of uh, defense he's put up here. So I think we'll imp and then look to run R&D and see what we can do. We haven't seen either of our two Davids, which I really would like it's just so expensive to deal with Wraparound or Archangel with uh, Faust and no data sucker support. That being said, I could get the data suckers out. Just have a little think about what that would look like. It would save us a card straight off the bat and get us a couple more mills. Yeah, I think I'm actually going to slow it down again here a little bit before I put the pressure on next turn. Financially speaking, I think he's only used one hedge fund. Is that even correct? No, one sweep sweep, sorry. And the rest of it has been drip economy. So he could get another burst of money, which would be pretty, pretty sad, which wants me to put the pressure on here. But nine credits is enough to put up a couple of bits of ice that could really hurt Faust. Could end up getting purged here, but again, not too worried about that. Okay. So yeah, let's go and see what is happening in R and D here. Gutenberg, that is one I forgot about, but a very, very valid um, piece of ice that also is a pain for Faust. So we could either take a tag, which will be a click and two, or we could pay two data suckers and two cards. Um, I've got no David. Yeah, I think, I think we'll let him trace this actually. And we're just going to take a tag here. And if it's the second Gutenberg, we'll have to break that one. Turnpike. Okay. Trace of five. So, yeah, I think we'll um, lose our credit. Oh, he docked us it. Um, so, we'll bring it down to strength two and... 
and we'll just break it with the hacktivist, I think. Let's see what we see. San San. Oh, I really wish I had an M to get rid of that, but I don't think I can afford to pay five credits, so no, we'll leave that where it is. Um, yeah, I think removing this tag has got to happen. Well, yeah, it definitely has to happen. It's just whether I want to throw a lamp right out here. Or I could go and take a run at archives. I definitely don't think I'm seeing seven points. Yeah, let's shoot the lamp right out and see if he purges. Curious to see what this card in server five is. It could be a three, two agenda. One thing with Jinteki.net is there's definitely no hiding quite how many virus counters you have. They're big and they're red and they're really clear, which is great. But you kind of want to be like, no, please don't purge. Because if he doesn't purge here, the opportunity to sell off the Lamprey and hopefully draw into one of our two David, Davids in the last 12 cards could give us a really good medium dig. He's definitely having to think about whether he should potentially, what I'm assuming is purge or score. Potentially score a 3 2 in server 5 there? Like, if that was an Astro, for example, it would be a real thinker. He does purge, okay. I think I have to go and check out what this server is now. Oh, but there's the David, wouldn't you know? And a parasite to go with it. And we still haven't seen either of our two adjusted chronotypes, which is kind of sad, but it's not the worst in the world. So let's go to the data sucker. Um, I really want to go and check what the server five is. So I'm going to David. And let's go see, should I imp first and then run it? Just in case it's just a sand sand. Or we could just parasite onto the turnpike and look to pressure R&D here. Money is definitely a small concern. Yeah, let's imp and go and have a look at server five. We definitely got two or three cards here we're happy to trash. So um, yeah, that's kind of what I thought could be there, so we'll David through that. I don't think this is going to be something we really want, actually. No, nope. but very happy to kill that. Now we have the imp. And now he really needs to look to put another piece of ice over R&D. I think cards like Gutenberg and Archangel and Wraparound, they're just so cheap for the strength. That's why double Davids really can be so crucial. So we're gonna Parasite run, it'll cost us one to break, which I think is spot on. Yeah, we lose a credit. And we'll break with an I've had worse. Astro, that's huge. Um, so that's really, really, really good for us. Should we run him again one more time and then just look to sell off the day of the next turn? I think that's a pretty legitimate play, actually. Just dev had worse again, I think is fair enough. Resistor. Can we imp this maybe? 
Um, no, it, yeah, screw it, let's input. Oh, special offer, grr, probably would have preferred to imp that, but oh well, that's not too bad. The unfortunate thing is I've just realized we don't have a credit to be able to install our clot. And I can't remember if he actually had two Sans and City grids or just one, which is a little bit troublesome also. Uh, there's David, there's a just a chronotype. So this is probably just a sit back turn. He might purge here to protect the turnpike, possibly. No. Oh, he's going to score an Astro, which is pretty big. But we now have the David, and really, I don't think uh, he can win now, considering I can just go R&D and then Archives and probably have the game. Hedge, global food, hedge. Now what I want to do is run archives and then make sure to take one credit so he can't, uh, so I can clot if needs be, essentially. Let's see what's in archives. Hopefully something we can get through. Um, can't lose a credit, which is fine. Uh, we'll have to pay two or take a tag. So yeah, we're definitely paying two because Quantum kitties are definitely a thing. And I assume this is the game. Ooh, yes it is. So yeah, like his hand must be full of at least uh, two to three more agendas on top of what we've already seen there. Um, overall, we put on some pretty good pressure and forced him to kind of ice up heavily on HQ and R&D and we were just really able to close that out. The, the Astro score at the end was a little bit worrying, but having this clot on the Street Peddler really gave us peace of mind, knowing that one credit was all we needed to stop a fast advance. So yeah, thanks so much for watching along, guys. We do appreciate it. I think this deck has potential. I just don't know if the archive interface and hacktivist meetings are good enough against other decks to even warrant them in the likes of you know, industrial genomics matchups. So I think I'll probably look to tweak it again and see if we can maybe look to kind of go back to maybe some of the old noise style and maybe just drop something like a scrubber in to help support the horizontal play and it might see more use um, in, in these kind of matchups as well. well. Look, thanks so much for watching guys. Really do appreciate any comments as ever and any feedback on decks or, or matchups you'd like to see and I hope to see you in the next video.